Okay, good morning everybody. My name is Nathalie Paquet and I will be your webinar moderator today. Welcome to our first 10, 10 webinars after the long summer break. Today you will learn more about the current Sun and Sunelec horizontal activities. And to guide you through this process, I'm here with two colleagues from CCMC, the Management Center. On the one hand, Monica Ibido, who is Program Manager in the unit Sustainability and Services, and Ashok Ganesh, our Director Innovation in San Senelec. Now it's time to give the floor to our speakers of today. So Ashok and Monica, the floor is yours. Okay, <coughs> thank you, Natalie. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome from sunny Brussels. Natalie said um, after the long summer, I hope it's still summer with you because it's still summer in Brussels at the moment. Um, and thank you to everybody for taking the time to join this um, 1010 webinar on horizontal and cross-sectoral standardization activities. We're going to give you an overview of, um, of the topic and how Sen and Senelec respond and, and react and, and, and manage those, all those many topics that fall under that heading. Um, necessarily, we won't cover all the, 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 the topics in depth, but we hope that the, the webinar will give you um, the means to find out more about those topics that you have an interest in, or even a, a, a raise, your, a raise your interest in, in topics that maybe you didn't know so much about. I just want to say, before we explain the, the program for the webinar, is the, um, it really is in dealing with horizontal and, and cross-sectoral activities, there, there's a wide range of needs that standardization through Sen and Senelec are meeting, and a whole range of opportunities. It's never been a more exciting time to be involved in standardization, to, to see the take-up of standardized standards products and the interest in standards. And that's really, really encouraging for, um, for the work that we do to support the stakeholders to achieve their needs through standards. Um, I'll just explain the, the, the program and explain that um, I'll cover some points and Monica will cover the others. So we're going to look at, first of all, the in the coming slides, the, the evolution that we see that we all, as individuals and, and, and organizations, we face. And those drive the changes and the changes in the Sen and Senelec try to then treat. The, um, the consequences of the impact, what sort of impacts does that have on the system of developing standards? The consequences and opportunities that this, this brings, this evolution bring. Then Monica will deal with exactly the, the mechanisms that we use for tackling horizontal issues. And we'll come on to um, what's, what's maybe the, what's in the pipeline, what's coming through, what we can expect in the future. And then we'll sum up at the end with the main messages and key learning points. And then if there are any questions arising, we'll, we'll try to answer those either during this webinar or, or afterwards um, uh, through written answers. So we'll delve into the, um, the first slide of the, the content slide. And what are the challenges, what are the drivers that um, standardization is trying to cope with? Um, at this point, I can, I can say from my own experience, there was a time, doesn't seem so long ago, where the world was very simple and everything was in straight lines in, that we understood. There were different business sectors, um, construction, engineering, manufacturing, transport, energy, and everything. The world was very simple. Um, and now we live in a, an age of growing complexity. Um, and the world is not so simple. And there's more and more issues that need to be dealt with. And lots of these issues are cross-cutting. So standardization and, and, and change are going hand in hand. Changes in business, in society, and technology are reflected in the changes in the content of standards, but also in the, the process of developing standards. If we look at the things like the demographic changes, and in Europe, um, in a few years, we will have even more people who are over the age of 60, 60 years, another 2 million. And that brings challenges for, the, for society, for, for industry, 
and brings challenges for standards that are supplying solutions for, uh, for the stakeholders. The number of European citizens work, living and working in urban areas will increase from currently around 78% to over 85%. And again, that will bring needs and challenges, opportunities and expectations on standards. Um, the uh, integration of new technologies into existing and what we call so-called traditional sectors, I mentioned manufacturing, transport, energy, but lots of others, also brings challenges and, and lots of these topics are, are, these new technologies are horizontal in nature. So we see uh, an interest in many issues and, and, and subjects which are start to be relevant to many business areas, many, um, many users, to suppliers, to customers, to individuals. I should just a minute. Apparently, some people didn't hear you for the first slide. Mm -hmm. So I would just suggest that you start again from the first slide okay. and we will just uh, cut the video recording afterwards. Okay. Okay. Just to be sure that everybody's on the same. Uh, okay. Sorry so for this. Apparently, some people had some problems. So okay, voila. Okay. So we'll just recap on the um, what will we we will cover in this um, in webinar very briefly. We'll talk about the the, the 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 things that are changing in in the world, in 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 business, in industry, in society that drive the needs for standards and the standardization process to change. We'll, we'll describe some of the impacts on standardization that need to be taken into account, but also see that there are not only needs, but there are opportunities. That we will talk about how exactly we tackle those horizontal issues in standardization, the, the mechanisms that we've put in place. We'll have a very quick look at the end about what's, what can it, we expect and further changes, the types of changes to, to be. But that's a little bit of crystal ball gazing. And then we'll summarize at the end the key learning points from this um, webinar. And hopefully we'll be in a position to take some um, questions and, and provide answers. And if not online, then we'll do it offline afterwards. So just coming to um, what are the types of changes in um, Natalie on the next slide, if, it, Sorry. if that's OK. The types of, of drivers for change in the world at large, so for business and for, for consumers, for citizens, organizations. We, we just ran through a, 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 a little list of talking about changes in um, population, in aging, um, how the overall in, in Europe the population is, is growing older, and that gives challenges but also gives opportunities and needs. Um, the rapid urbanization, the challenges from limited resources in terms of energy, but also materials. The fast, extremely fast take up of um, technological innovations, especially in things like digital uh, transformations of, of society and, and, and business. And the, the result of that is that we now live in a world which is not simple and straightforward and everything can be put into, into very neat boxes or um, silos, as we say, um, compartmentalized. We can say for semi-semiconductor standardization sectors, we were very much able to recognize discrete business sectors like manufacturing and construction and energy and transport and many others. But now there are lots and lots of issues which are cross-cutting and of interest to and relevance to a lot of sectors, a lot of organizations and a lot of um, of, of end users and consumers. So if we go on to the next slide, and these are some examples of, of the, that evolution really um, uh, it, very visibly, and the arrow that you can see on the slide in arguably, it's very simply simplified, but in up to the mid point of the last century, the 20th century, standards were coping with basically manufacturing needs standards for, for product specifications, for test methods, for terminologies, rather a simple, uh, straightforward um, um, 
relationship between standards and those needs. And as we moved forward through to the latter part of the 20th century, we saw the take up of standards for more complex issues, a wider range of issues, the involvement of a wider range of stakeholders. Um, and we see topics like um, the environment, consumer needs being incorporated into, into standards, content. Now, um, much more recently, standards addressing eco-design principles, accessibility, both to things like services, online services, but also the, the, the infrastructure, accessing buildings, accessing um, things like um, airports, railway stations. Then there's the smart um, concepts, smart cities, smart grids, smart metering, which are, are rather dealing with a lot of cross-cutting areas. And what does the future hold? Well, again, we can, we can, um, we can have our own ideas, but there will be challenges coming from the take up of digital technologies, different thinking about standards and systems of, 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 of uh, complex, different complexities out in the, in the real world. So um, topics are start to be more and more cross-cutting. Um, the um, standards that process is involving more and more stakeholders, some of whom are less familiar with standards or are learning about how the process works, how, how standards can meet the needs. Um, it means that stakeholders from different areas are having to work together. If we look at the specific example of smart cities, um, there we see stakeholders coming together from business as suppliers of, of, of technologies, for example, or goods and services. Government who are setting the frames for how these um, communities will, will, will operate together as, as, as entities. The local authorities who are not only the users, the buyers of, the, of, of products and services, but also they put those things together for us as citizens. Then there's the um, or, uh, entities like utility companies or providers of transport systems as well as energy, um, and gas and communications. And then us as citizens who live in communities, we, if we're developing or talking about standardization in this area, we all have to come together and work together. And that adds to the complexity that, that standardization is facing. And I don't portray that as a problem. It's something that we need to do. And it's a challenge that we want to, and we welcome, we want to. If we go on to the next slide, um, we look at a specific area like uh, manufacturing, which um, we can see there are specific evolutions, and on the slide you can, you can say that, that recognize that um, there's a fourth industrial revolution that's going on at the moment, the take up of, of manufacturing of, of um, cyber physical systems, the incorporation of new technologies, and areas like robotics, um, smart manufacturing, but even through to areas like um, intelligent transport systems. And these are taking up horizontal technologies, the Internet of Things, cloud technologies, considerations about web security and privacy, where lots of data is being exchanged, which, for which the provision of the, the, the service or the product uh, design and manufacture is based. And that re then results in lots of uh, data, new data being generated that can be um, analyzed and used to improve. And those are the, the, the issues which are affecting many, many different sectors. As I mentioned, what we see is uh, traditional sectors very much taking up these new, new technologies. If we move on to the, the next slide. Um, and, I, and I really do want to stress that this is, um, there are opportunities which around the needs. Um, we see needs coming from innovation, and some of that innovation is driven by research, and that's in the, the societal area, but also in the, in the industrial and business areas, and areas like sustainability, initiatives about around thinking about systems, how systems coordinate and cooperate in, in the real world in the 21st century. And a very interesting set of concepts um, new clusters, as we've labeled them, the smart, smart cities, smart grids, smart meters, eco, eco design, eco innovation, eco labeling, e services, e business, e government, e mobility. And therefore, the, the, 
a, a nice idea, I think, is the, seeing the evolution of the application of standards from a, a first generation of, of standards dealing with technical aspects of products, um, specifications, test methods, through to management of systems, a second level of use of standards, uh, standards for processes, and then through to a very um, um, up-to-date third generation of application of standards for dealing with values and principles and behaviours. And um, I give one example, a very recent example of an international ISO standard uh, 27500, the Human Centred Organisation, which was published this year, dealing with the values and beliefs of organisations. And I think we'll see more and more of this take up of this um, for standardisation in, in the future. The next, the next slide, please. So that means, um, as I mentioned, we're talking about um, the range of stakeholders involved, interested, who want to see their needs taken up in standardization is expanding. And that's very welcome because it means that the standards are more relevant, they're more um, inclusive, and standards are, are, are a value for, for the end user. And we see on the, on the slide um, industry, of which a large part is, is made up of SME organisations, but then we have consumer organisations, environmental organisations, those organisations representing the workers, service providers, entities like designers, local authorities, um, policy makers, researchers, citizens, education providers. Um, the, the, brings a challenge, this growing um, range of stakeholders, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, putting together the, the, the stakeholders who have different needs, but also have different uh, aspects, perspectives on standardization, and very practically different uh, levels of knowledge and experience of standards, and making the standardization process um, work for them. Um, so this is a this is a, a, a picture of the of the, the sorts of things that standardisation needs to um, needs to address. And on the next slide, we um, we see there is a requirement for more cooperation and coordination between a variety of stakeholders across different vertical and horizontal sectors and topics. Those changes are forcing Sen and Sanlet to adapt and to change our ways of working to accommodate. Um, that requires um, raising awareness, and I draw attention to the fact that we have in Sense Analyc an initiative on so-called on education about standardization. It's about getting more and more st um, stakeholders involved in the process, communicating about standardization and how it works, who the standardizers are. Um, the big challenge is, is, are for communication within um, different communities. We, we see that um, for our industry stakeholders, those who are traditionally involved in the standardization process, maybe in bigger organizations, companies in manufacturing, for example, have, have standardization functions. And those people who come to the standardization process have traditionally been involved in from those functions in companies. But also now we have input and in interest from those in companies coming from innovation functions. And those are quite often different functions in the same company who maybe don't talk together about so much about standards. And so there's a need to, within different communities, to, to, to link those up so that it all fits together. We can also talk about um, new ways of writing standards to be more inclusive um, and guidance about how topics can horizontal topics can be incorporated into the standards development process. And at this point, I, um, I hand over to my colleague, um, Monica, who will tell you how we're, how we're doing that. Thank you, Ashok. So uh, we would like to give you with these slides a few uh, key examples, but it's not an exhaustive list, of course, of how we deal with horizontal issues, sometimes also in answer to European framework policies. And we pick up three examples, climate, accessibility, and services. We start from climate. In 2013, the European Commission adopted a EU strategy on adaptation to climate change, 
in which European standardization organizations were invited to contribute as to make Europe more climate resilient. And the strategy highlighted the, role, the key role of standards in securing the climate resilience. Following to this, in 2013, for example, we developed Sen and Senelec established an adaptation to climate change coordination group as to coordinate standardization activities and foster collaboration in standardization work in this field. This group is also responsible for coordinating the implementation of the European Commission standardization request in support of the EU strategy on adaptation to climate change. The coordination group is advising and coordinating European standardization issues in this field, and in particular in three priority sectors, transport infrastructure, energy infrastructure, and buildings and construction, and also ICT infrastructure that are closely interconnected with those sectors. As all the coordination group, the climate change coordination group is not elaborating standardization deliverables because these deliverables are actually developed by technical committees that remain in charge on developing standards. But nevertheless, the, this coordination group is doing an important activity of coordinating the activities among technical bodies. As for accessibility, we know that in Europe around 80 million people have a disability. And this number probably is much higher if we consider that all those with a temporary impairment and disability due to aging. Accessibility is an important principle for us. It's essential to the full participation and inclusion in society of the widest range of users. We know that this is a United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability, an EU Disability Strategy 2010-2020, and in 2015, there is also a proposal of directive on accessibility requirements for products and services that was issued, aimed to improve the functioning of internal market for accessible products and services. And this proposal for directive, better known as European Accessibility Act, is mentioning accessibility standards under development to mainstream accessibility, for example, such as the one developed by Sen and Senelec Joking Group 5, designed for all, or the one that are um, about to be developed by the Sen and Senelec Job Working Group 6, which is kicking off its activities in October, or the one already developed by the e-accessibility Sen, Senelec and Etsy Joy Working Group, which is a rare example, but existing, of a three ESOs Joy Working Group. As for services, the directive on, on services in 2006 and the EU, also the European regulation on European standardization 1025 recognized the importance of services standards and their contribution to the growth of and competitiveness of Europe. Services account today between 60 and 70 percent of the economic activity in the 28 EU member states of the European Union, and standardization is increasingly being used to support the development of a single market for services. We have in this topic uh, actually an advisory group on services called SACS, which is an advisory body to the same administrative board on policy and strategic matters in relation to the European services standardization. SACS, this group, is currently working on a strategy to address European standardization in the fields of services, which is actually expected to be finalized by the end of this year. Sen and Senelec were first of all developing standards in the so-called vertical traditional sectors or vertical silos in answer to manufacturers and industry. And this of course will continue to happen in the future because it's important. But today we are also working on more and more horizontally within sectors. For example, nanotechnology which is covering food, textile, consumer products or smart cities, which is actually an overarching concept which embraces smart energy, urban intelligent transport system, waste management, smart grids. Or, for example, we are working in sectors that are per se horizontal and cross-sectorial, like accessibility or environment of services. Today, for example, a distributor of electricity is also selling gas, or utility companies are working closely with ICT companies in smart grids development. So we see an evolution of society and a variety of stakeholders working together. And this actually is challenging also the consensus process in standardization. 
This change had an impact also in the way we are used to define sectors of standardization, or technical committees assigned to sector activities, therefore also an internal brainstorming on new sector classification. Brainstorming also started internally here at CCMC with the purpose to better explain to the general public what we are or not covering with standardization. How we tackle horizontal sectorial activities? We concluded that actually there is no one solution fitting all, and why? Because the solution much depends on the topic, meaning the specificity of the topic. Some topics are more mature, that means ready to be standardized. Some other less, they need more strategic thinking. Or, for example, this much depends on the level of impact of this topic on society, and therefore on, on stakeholders, on the interest of our stakeholders. Sometimes there are policy drivers or standardization requests that push for standard development. So, due to horizontal nature of many of the new activities, Sen and Senelec are embarking upon more and more coordination groups or job working groups or joint technical committees have been established. So, without pretending to be fully comprehensive, we would like to give you, to provide you a list of horizontal topics and the way we deal with according to our existing structures and bodies. So, you know that they exist and in case of interest you could ask for more information. So, we will give an example of, co of coordination groups, job working groups, joint technical committees and advisory groups. We we'll start with the coordination groups. Those groups are actually usually a short-term group, even if the duration can be extended after a few years and they had the aim to coordinate and advise on standardization activities on specific topics involving multiple technical bodies. So the focus here is on facilitating coordination and exchange of information between different technical bodies. We pick up examples of some coordination group, for example, on the Smart Energy Grids Coordination Group, which is a sense and exit coordination group, as well as the Smart Meters Coordination Group, a Teresa's Coordination Group, as well as Smart and Sustainable Cities and Community Coordination Group, or the Eco Design Coordination Group, which is a sense and group, the Adaptation to Climate Change, as was mentioned before, and the E-Mobility Coordination Group. Just to pick two examples more in deeper, for example, the Smart Metering, in response actually to the Monday 441, Sen and Senelec decided to combine their expertise by establishing the Smart Meter Coordination Group as joint advisory body. And the Smart Meter Coordination Group actually produced important relevant report, but also a technical report on functional reference architecture for communication in smart metering systems, which is actually available online on our website. On the contrary, for example, the Smart Cities Coordination Groups didn't produce any technical report, but could produce an important report containing an overview of European and international standardization activity for my smart cities and a set of recommendations to the boards on how to tackle standardization in these new challenging sectors. They also, for example, promote uh, they also promoted a survey addressed to all technical bodies and advisory groups that are developing standards potentially relevant for this topic. And this group, as mentioned Ashok before, is actually open to different stakeholders, service providers, industry, but also association of cities. Then we have joint working groups. The joint working groups, joint SENSENELEC working groups or SENSENELEC ETSI working groups, actually are set up with the aim to carry out harmonization work. And this occurs when both SEN and SENELEC or SEN SENELEC ETSI have some technical aspects to deal in common. So the procedure is normally applied if no competent SEN or SENELEC working group is in existence. But it may also be applied if one organization of both already have a competent working group in operation. And in this case, actually, the, any item or pre-existing item of the work program of the working group falling within the scope of the intended joint work shall be transferred to the job working groups. The job working groups actually establish work programs. That means that they develop European standardization deliverables, ENs, TRs, on the technical reports. And the work programs are approved by the technical board. There is a question for all the job working groups on the lead. 
which is actually at the level of the work item and not at the level of the technical body. That means that work items are allocated from the start to the work program of SEN or SENELEC. And this had an impact because actually depending on the lead, the rules and procedure of the lead organization will be applied, for example, differently for the creation of new work items. Publication of the job working group will actually have both SEN and SENELEC logos. Those job working groups are composed by, usually by a convener and by a secretary appointed by NSP on national committees and national delegation open to all SEN and SENELEC members with the rule of one common delegation per countries appointed by SEN and SENELEC members. National delegation hold national position and have voting rights but also observer, being partner organization of liaison organization or representative of other technical bodies. Those observers, as you know, have no voting rights and for liaison organization, the SEN Senate Guide 25 applies. Here we give example of, for example, job working group. We notice a lot of job working groups in energy sector, energy audits, energy management, energy measurement, energy related products and energy efficiency, but also we have job working group on active implant medical devices, three job working group on accessibility design for all accessibility in built environment in e-accessibility, which uh, is a bit different because it's a uh, three ESOs job working groups. So we, in which all the three European standardization organizations work, work together. So they publish actually NEN, which is triple logos. And then we have also joint technical committees. Joint technical committees are set up by the technical boards and as before it happens, it occurs when both SEN and SENLEC have some aspects to be, to be dealt with in common. So they are set up in order to avoid duplication of work and normally applied if no competent SEN or SENLEC technical committee exists. As for the joint working groups as a, uh, that I illustrated uh, before, they are composed by a chairperson this time, not a convener but a chairperson that usually precise meeting and manage consensus, secretary appointed by national standard bodies and national committees, national delegation, one common national delegation per countries, holding national position and voting rights, and observers, as I was saying before. So at this point you might, might ask what is the difference between job working groups and joint ten technical committees, but actually sometimes joint working groups can also develop one, uh, one deliverable and usually sense and elect technical committees, joint technical committees have a work program and develop one, more than one deliverable. And finally we have also advisory groups. Those advisory groups, they advise on issue by topic how those topics can be taken up or added in standardization. We have, for example, advisory group on services, SACS, accessibility. It's a SAN BT 213 uh, SAGA strategic advisory group or occupational health and, safe and safety on healthcare standard on environment. Usually a BT working group is set up by the board whenever actually there is a technical need for more information, advice or performing a study. So they have an advisory role. And one, for example, of, I don't want to say most known, but well-known example of advisory bodies, for example, SABE, the Strategic Advisory Board of Environment, which provides strategic advice on environmental matters, but it also filling up, for example, a health desk, the SEN Environmental Health Desk, which provides information and support to all SEN technical committees and working groups when addressing environmental issues in European standardization. As you can imagine, all those horizontal issues cannot be dealt by a technical body only, but they need more at the stage that they are strategic thinking. So that's why we set up advisory groups. If you want actually to have more information, I want to recall here that we have a SEN website, the SENELEC web website, but also a SEN SENELEC common website. SEN and SENELEC, as you know, are two independent organizations, but we have a common web website which is actually witnessing the joint forces that we put on some horizontal and specific uh, topic. We have also a uh, Connect newsletter, a SEN SENELEC newsletter, which is issues twice a year that contain relevant information of horizontal topic. 
if you want to know really more, uh, get in contact, this is the advice, with members, uh, National Sand Standardization Organization or National Senelec Standardization Organization. But of course, we are here as program management managers to help you in finding out more on the topic of your interest. Um, so we have contact point, each sector has a program manager contact point. So if you go, do go on the website, on what we do, Philo Works, then you can choose the sector and you will find the specific contact program manager point that can provide you with all the information that you need. We must also not forget that we have developed uh, since a long time guides which are still valid and very full of information. Those of course are not normative documents but are documents that are published by SEN or SENELEC giving rules, orientation, advice or recommendation related to European standardization in a variety of sectors. So horizontal guide, for example, SEN guide 4 for addressing environmental issues in product standards. Um, here you see actually a list of guides that we have in different sectors, child safety guidance or safety of machinery on uh, guidance, for example, for the development of services standards. And in next slide, you will see a continuation of this list. For example, I pick up Senelec Guide 17, which is a relevant guide for small and medium enterprises. Guidance for writing standards, taking into account the needs of SMEs. But it's, that's not all. We have also other horizontal platforms and tools. And here, I'm giving again the floor to Ashok. Thanks, Monica. Uh, the, um, I'm being told we, we, we're running dangerously behind time, so I'll be very quick. The, um, I think the, the, that list of guides gives us a good idea that there are, we sense and like address horizontal issues in, in a number of different ways. And, and yet another way is through these, um, these tools or platforms that you see on, on the slide, um, how we address um, research and innovation through a specific dedicated working group called the, uh, the STAIR group standing for Standards, Innovation and Research. We have a dedicated Sensenelec um, group about education, about standardization, which is looking to promote the understanding of what standardization is and its benefits. There are specific tools that we've developed through, um, against dedicated groups in Sensenelec for uh, looking at SME needs, so that SMEs can benefit fully from standards and standardization, which have developed an online toolbox of solutions which can contains a lot of intro information guidance of how to get involved in standardization how to find information about standardization how to contribute to the standardization process and similarly a, a, a set of toolboxes for societal stakeholders covering consumers environmental and workers and for those stakeholder groups how to again come closer to the standardization process by by getting in touch with the right people and having the right information. If we come on to the, the, the coming up to the end now, we're uh, everybody breathes a sigh of relief. Um, what what can we expect? What other horizontal cross cutting issues can we expect to see? Well, this is our maybe our some of our best guesses. Um, we see the move in the, the, the to servitization. This idea that um, products are being manufactured and put on the market, but the service element, the offering to the customer of the use of, this, of the product through a service um, focus will become more important. The sharing economy, silver economy, um, we mentioned the growing uh, aging population, digital transformations and the skills required to accommodate and make the best of the digital technologies. Industry 4.0 or the, the digital um, transformation of industry to smart manufacturing, use of big data. And if we had time, I'd invite Monica to explain blockchain technology, but I don't think we've got time for that. But these are sorts of things that we may that we may see coming through that um, as stakeholders become t interested in these areas and come to standardization for, for help, for needs. Then um, the, the, the very last slide, key learning points. Um, Monica, shall I do that if you want to do it? The, just to recap on what we've covered this morning in this um, webinar. So standardization is evolving to match the needs of an increasing 
complex world that we live in, not only for business, but for societies to take up of new needs, especially coming from technologies. That gives rise to more and more horizontal and cross-sectoral issues which are to be treated in standardization. That involves the involvement of a, a wide range of stakeholders, a wider range of stakeholders who have different needs, different experiences of standardization, different levels of knowledge. We've put in place a wide range of tools, some of them very new, some of them existed for a long time, information tools, guidance, but also structures to, to discuss the topics, to discuss how to bring in, for example, sustainability into standards, accessibility into standards. Um, Senate and Senate provide a lot of information, there are a lot of contact points, and we've tried to give an indication of at least some of those. It's certainly not the end of the story, and there are more evolutions coming, as we can expect uh, in, in the exciting world of, of developments and, and an exciting time for standardization. So this is not the end of the story, and, and um, we'll, be, we'll be seeing more, more changes and more advances and more innovations. Um, so this short, not, not as short as it should have been, webinar, has hopefully given you a, a little glimpse into the world of this horizontal issues, what they are and how they're being treated, and um, hopefully that gives you a possibility to um, to find out more if you wish to. And we're very much we're hoping to to be able to 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 meet those needs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ashok. Thank you, Monica. Thank you.